Welcome, Dr. Jane Fitch, the past president of the American Society of Anesthesiologists. I'm so glad to have you here today. And for those of us who may not know you very well, can you please give us a brief summary about yourself? Absolutely. Uh, congrats on doing this project. Hopefully it will be very helpful to other folks out there. I'm Jane Fitch. I am a retired academic anesthesiology. I retired a couple of years ago after a career in academic anesthesiology. And during that time, I also had the great honor and privilege of being president of the American Society of Anesthesiologists and also president of the Society of Academic Anesthesiology Associations. So both our national specialty organization as well as our national academic organization. We just somehow have to figure out how to get more women interested in anesthesiology because honestly, for my 30 or 40 years of practice, you know, we barely budged off that 20, 30, maybe 40%. And that's pretty much been it. So, I mean, to me, I, I think it's got to be one of the best for women. But anyway, we need to obviously keep working at it for sure. Yeah, this is, this is one of the reasons that prompted me to actually create this um, was that I felt maybe by having um, a video uh, catalog of such amazing women uh, in anesthesia may bring to light that we are a very... Um, amazing field and it, and it has a lot of women leaders in in our field lots of times you're the only woman in the room or one of few women in a room and you know there again that's where we can rely on each other and help each other out as a su source of strength and and support um so that you don't feel so lonely uh, at, at the top and it, you know, it, there's bias out there, absolutely, whether it's gender, race, or, or whatever. Um, you know, I experience gender biases over my career. But again, that's where you've got to have support around you. And then also, you really got to learn how to work a system and, you know, don't ever feel that there's nothing you can do. You can always, you know, take things up a level. If you're in a university system, you've got your chair, you've got a dean, you've got a provost, you've got a president, you know, there are all sorts of ways that you can go about addressing issues. But again, it's great that we're at a point now where people can identify it, they can call it out for what it is, report it. Um, and I think with everything that's transpired over this last year, year and a half, people are more attuned to what's going on and more sensitive, hopefully, to what's going on out there and more willing to be able to do something to address things that are out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're lucky that now people are more um, open to addressing um, right. the problem. Um, I don't think people were as willing or mm -hmm. coming about it. Um, right. So I think that's been a great change. Being a female leader in a very male-dominated field as anesthesia is, um, what do you think we can do to um, encourage more women and also uh, people of underrepresented groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole of diversity uh, and inclusion needs to permeate not just our specialty, but every medical specialty. And there again, I think a lot of it starts at the very earliest of ages in exposing young kids and, and young children to our specialty, uh, making them see that it's fun. Um, I think that goes a long way towards attracting the best and brightest. And you have to stick with it and, you know, let 
the college students come and observe. And then when you have medical student rotations, that's your time to shine and show off our specialty and what we're all about and what we have to offer. So it, it just, I think the best way to do it is to show that you love what you're doing and that enthusiasm hopefully will be contagious and uh, get others that are like-minded on board. Mm -hmm. And talking about um, gender biases, what, what can we do as a, as a, as a specialty to change that? I think it all starts with every individual person. And again, every person, you know, do a deep dive, do some soul searching, look at yourself. How do I contribute to the problem? How do I help eliminate? And then how do I help address the problem? And, you know, from from yourself, then obviously reaching out to uh, your network. We've got to make it so that anesthesiology is a welcoming specialty for everyone and that it's all inclusive and that, that everyone feels welcome and feels like they have a home here and that they have something to offer and they can contribute. Um, I, I think just starting with yourself and working your way out, that typical ripple effect, hopefully uh, over time will make it so much better for everyone. More of us need to be a little bit introspective. Mm -hmm. Um, thanks again. Thanks for your time. Sure. Good, good luck with the project. Thanks for doing it.